Shalom, man of God. I'm taking the questions which are premised upon the earlier teaching that has been done. I know the eternal consequences of sitting in the seat of a master. If what I'm saying you don't know, you can confirm with the Spirit of God. Some of us came by the will of man. Some of us came by the will of the flesh. We are two different people then. Then there are people who came by blood. Holiness is not the opposite of sin. It is righteousness that stands in opposition to sin. The giving away of a bride or of a woman to a man does not begin with the church, it begins with a home. The church is a sacred institution. It is not our church, it is the church of the living God. I mean to give answers on the grounds of the word of God. Stay within the word, not to be sentimental, but to allow the word of God to speak for itself. Then we come to what most theologians even in the body of Christ ran away from Apollonius of Tiana when you mention that name people shake because they seem to think that the proofs are too evident but you examine Apollonius of Tiana and you begin to realize even Krishna is better So if you listen to the question of the young man, when I finish, you will come back and answer that question. Who was Apollonius of Tiana? People of God. Apollonius was a very honorable man who lived after Jesus Christ. His life spans according to the writings of Philostratus. That he was born in AD 15 and he died in AD 96. For your information, this is not BC. This is AD. Krishna is BC. But he fails the test. So can we take another who now is AD and see if he will pass the test. But the question is this. How on earth could they compare one with another who is a reference to time this is ad reference to jesus this is bc reference to jesus so you cannot even know your birthday until you know jesus i don't know if you got that one you can't tell which day we are in until you know jesus He's a reference to time because he's the span of eternity. He is the origin from which everything proceeds. Then hear this. Apollonius, if he lived in AD 15, that means that after Jesus was dead, it was a little after a decade that Apollonius appeared. But do you know what? With Jesus, he had disciples who went out and came in with him. Matthew was an eyewitness. John was an eyewitness. Mark was an eyewitness. Then look, the doctor. This is where we need these guys. He said, even as they delivered them unto us, Matthew has written. Mark has written. I also want to write, but I want to write it well. Because if we don't write it well, in a certain time to come, if we think that Christianity is a religion for the unschooled, the unschooled will present a message. But that message will not be enough to defend our faith. That is why if you are here, you are a student. You should know that you have a real opportunity to become a fine Christian gentleman that can stand and defend your faith. 
Hey, when you go to school and you're supposed to write a thesis, it's an opportunity for you to know how to defend your faith. When you go to school and you're supposed to prove a hypothesis, hypothesis one, two, and three, and take it through empirical step-by-step research in order to dissolve doubts, in order to make sure that whatever the proof is, you went through the proper framework of academia to do your presentation. If another wants to stand you up or stand up to you to confront you, the person now begins to ask myself, do I know the terms for this research? Have I been able to go through it well? Please don't be intimidated if you didn't go to school as much as some of us here might have gone. But you see, you might be a Peter, but I want to be a Paul. You might be a Peter, I want to be a Paul. You might be a Matthew, I want to be a Luke. You know, Matthew is a tax collector, you go to school a little, but Luke is a doctor, you don't go to school a little, you exhaust the ladder of academia. Strive for the height of academia. In CCI, we don't joke here. In CCI, we don't make, permit me to put it this way in all honor, a fool of time to say I'm called into the ministry. And so, I'm thinking about going out into the world. Listen, the world out there, do you know what they fear? They don't fear anointing. They fear when you say you have schooled. That is the language they hear. That is the language they understand. Because you are dressed like one of them. Yet you understand beyond what they understand. Then they are amused. And they watch you. They are mesmerized. They watch you in wonderment. They begin to say, we went to the same school. Sat in the same class. How did you come by this? You look at them and say, Christ is my wisdom. If you walk up and say, Christ is my wisdom, Christ is my wisdom, yet you can't speak their language. They begin to look down on your Christ. The Bible said, Look. I like the way he puts it in Luke 1. He said, You got it from many eyewitnesses, which in the beginning and ministers of the word. Ah, allow people to talk when they are preaching. Don't say they are full of themselves. Listen, what they are doing, many people have been intimidated. The intimidation in the church is too long. It's been long, long, too long. It's been in office for too long. We need men that understand the script. And before they talk, hear what they say in verse 3. Luke says, It seemed good to me also. Having had perfect understanding of all things. Peter said there are some things in his book they are hard to understand. Luke said, there is no thing in any book that is too hard to understand. I have perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee, not haphazardly, but I'm writing in order. I am doing the thing empirically. I am writing it, introduction, objectives. I'm writing it. Ah, research questions. I'm writing it. I'm going through Ah, literary <laughs> review, literature review. He's done the thing in order. He's done his data collection. He's analyzed it. He's used SPSS. He's gone into the thing. He is opening the thing up to let you know the graphs, the bar charts, the pie charts, the histograms. The Poisson equation, the standard deviation, with reference to what I'm saying, shows that Jesus is Lord. Without any controversy, hear me. He said, Because I have the opportunity to stand before you, most excellent Theophilus. There are some places, if you don't go to school, you will not appear before most excellent. Theophilus. I remember Paul appeared before King Agrippa. Who did Peter appear before? When they were calling him, he was running. Hey, don't bring me, you know. I don't want to come and disgrace myself. Oh. 
please. But when the challenge came, Paul said, most excellent Festus, Agrippa. When things were going wrong, Paul used the law. He said, I appeal to Caesar. To, then he said, to Caesar you shall go. If you don't know law, with which mouth will you appeal to who? Who was Apollonius? Who was Apollonius? Apollonius lived and died in AD 96. Can you imagine the first person to write anything about Apollonius? One man, his name was Philostratus. Philostratus. No Philomena. No Philomena. Philostratus. Can I talk to you? Yes. When you look into our Bible, one man called Jesus, Matthew wrote about him. Luke wrote about him. Paul wrote about him. John wrote about him. Peter wrote about him. Timothy. Listen, people. By the time you realize, none of them Ever conflicted they were speaking about one man because they were eyewitnesses but you Philostratus Philostratus came up alone and wrote about Apollonius of Tiana can you imagine when he wrote it in the year 225 when the man was dead and gone in AD 95 Subtract AD 95 from AD 225. Over a hundred years. How many of you can tell me about your grandfather who lived a hundred years ago? Whatever you say, question is, were you an eyewitness? Were you there? The subject of the life of Apollonius of Tiana was written by Philostratus over a century after his death. However, Jesus' death was written by eyewitnesses in his lifetime. For we have not followed, that's how Peter said, cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. There were eyewitnesses of his majesty. That is what Peter says. Now, when Philostratus was ready to write, there was an empress called Julia Domina. Julia Domina. About the time the church was beginning to expand, and now gives you the reason why Constantine used a different strategy. Julia Domina contracted Philostratus to malign the special place of Jesus Christ and to claim one of the greatest philosophers and students of Pythagoras who was Apollonius of Tiana. He decided that Philostratus should write a whole material that would venerate Apollonius and to make him stand apart with Jesus and to ensure that Jesus is without size. Empress Julia Domina or Domna with scripts that he took from one guy who was called Damis. In those days, when Apollonius would work a miracle, way back after the ministry they claim of Apollonius had begun, with his five years of silence, which I've spoken about already, which we refer to presently as having a degree, this damage will scribble a few of the things. Empress Julia took the script and gave it to Philostratus and said to him, write something. None of 
Apollonius followers wrote anything about him. Thus, if after a century, Philostratus had reported and had been reported upon with manuscripts about him, how dare you compare him to Jesus? Who in his time had eyewitnesses and about his departure and years down, just a few years afterwards, right things were made about him that if we were to write the things about Jesus, all the books of this world could not contain. For your information, on the premise that Jesus was before Apollonius, anybody can put up a conjecture. But because Jesus is deity and a spirit and is God-man, if you try to do something in flesh, because the words he's speaking are spirit, you will fail. And time will find you out. There is no record of the death of Apollonius till date. Only that Philostratus admits in his writing that one of his followers claimed he had a dream and saw the spirit of Apollonius after his death. Oh, do you know how many of us have seen our grandfathers after they are dead? And the things that they told us that there is gold here in our dream. And when we went to dig, there was no gold. As for dream, anybody can dream. You can dream and tell me that your great grandfather came and he said he's giving you two sure lotto numbers. And on Saturday evening, the numbers that he gave to you, you can put all your money on it, 2017. And by the time you realize the numbers is 2118, you're like, ah, this my grandfather has worried me. Please understand this. As for dreams, nobody uses dreams in any school <laughs> of proof. <laughs> you cannot appear in the day when you are called upon at your Bible. Then when you are questioned, how do you prove it? You say, I had a dream. Which dream? You are standing in your Bible. Prove that thing. You are saying you are using dreams. Please forget about it. It doesn't stand. There is no group of people who should follow anybody's dreams. Keep me moving. Philostratus claims that there is a mystery of his hero's life by saying, quoted, concerning the manner of the death of Apollonius, if he did die, is that how to give a um, how do you call it? An account? If he did die, the accounts are various. Probably you people are not hearing me. Philostratus claims that there is a mystery of his hero's life by saying, concerning the manner of the death of Apollonius of Tiana, if he did die, the accounts are various. Philostratus therefore is choosing and he prefers a version in which Apollonius also disappears mysteriously and he claims it happened in the temple of the goddess Dictina in Crete. I'm happy. Thank God Apollonius disappeared. But my Jesus, when he died, he was buried. Thank God, Apollonius disappears. But my Jesus, after three days, he was resurrected. Thank God, Apollonius disappears. Where? In a shrine. Thank God, Jesus did an open display on the Mount of Olives. With witnesses seeing him. It was not in a shrine. Where some people in Crete will come and tell us the shrine was too holy. We were afraid to enter. There is no record of the death of Apollonius. It is only that Philostratus writes that one of his followers claims concerning the death of Apollonius, he saw it in a dream. Now, let's take the account of Muhammad. In Quran 4, 157 to 158. And as for the Abosin, they claim we killed the Messiah. 
Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they neither killed nor crucified him. It was only made to appear so. Why did Muhammad say that? Because you remember that when Jesus was carrying the cross, Simeon came to help him. So they claim when he was carrying the cross, the cross, his face started changing into Jesus' face. And Jesus walked away quietly and silently. Oh, people. Is that how your holy book can lie? They have no knowledge whatsoever. Only making assumptions. Can you imagine? You were not there, Muhammad. Eyewitnesses were there. They saw him. He spoke seven different words whilst on the cross. He was not confused about his mother. He was not confused about John. He spoke matters of forgiveness. He gave up the ghost. The witness of the curtains that tore in the temple was a proof that it was not Simeon. What would the death of Simeon cause in the temple? You need to answer all those questions. Unless you say all the things that happened that were written were also conjecture. And you, on one verse alone, you use it to overthrow the entire death and resurrection of Jesus. That can never be allowed agreed upon in any school of academia because you need two or three witnesses. You can't use one verse to claim Jesus didn't die. They claim they certainly did not kill him. People, they killed him. Why do I say that? Because one verse in the Quran is not enough. Check our Bible. Over 200 verses claim he died, claim he resurrected, claim he ascended, claims he seated, claims he would appear a second time. Then you jump into the second time of his appearing and you begin to agree with us. How did you come by that? Please listen. Others claim that the death of Jesus was forged. If it was forged, how come Jesus spoke himself of his death? Tell me which of these people announced their death. Not even Krishna, Muhammad, Buddha, all the fathers of the various sects of religion. Nobody declared his death. And nobody was exact about the time of their resurrection. But when they asked for a sign, Jesus spoke out and said, An adulterous generation, there shall be no sign given to you than the sign of Jonah. Three days and three nights, the Son of Man will be in the belly of the earth, and afterwards he will arise. How many of you here can tell me when you will even die? And how many of you can tell me if you should die and be buried, when you will come out of your graves. There is only one man that can do that. His name is Jesus. The Bible said, it was by infallible proofs. Somebody says, why didn't he appear to Pilate? To Caesar. Why didn't he appear to the high priest? That's a very simple matter. Because they won't preach. Because if he appears to them, it will be a waste. They won't preach it. They won't say it. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 40 to 42. Acts 25, verse 7. Verse 18 to 19. Acts 26, 1 to 8, John 20, 25, and Acts 17, verse 11. This is why Jesus appeared to his disciples. He appeared to them because of, can, can I have two people reading the verse of scripture for me quickly? Acts 10, 40 to 42. Acts 25, verse 7, 18 to 19. Acts 26, 1 to 8. John 20, 25, 
and Acts 17, the verse 11. Read Acts 10, 40 to 42. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. So God did this openly. Not to all the people. So our Bible says he didn't do it to all the people. But unto witnesses chosen before of God. It was God who chose who Jesus should appear to. Even to us. Even to us. Who did eat and drink with him. Those who did eat and drink with him. After he rose from the dead. After he rose from the dead. And. And he commanded us to preach unto the people. So there was a reason why Jesus had to appear. It was not so that he would just do it for a show. He appeared so that you would go and preach. And God knowing the hearts of men. God knew the hearts of those that would preach it. So he appeared to us who to preach unto and the people drink, that they should go and testify that it was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. That God who is the judge of the quick and the dead. Listen to me. If you deny this, you will meet him one day. Acts 25 verse 7. Keep it. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul which they could not prove. There have been many times on the subject of the resurrection, the death of Jesus, many have challenged it, but they don't have proofs. But every time we open our Bibles, we have the proof. Not only with our Bible, we have proofs. From the Qumran caves, we have proofs. That date in history, we have proofs. That date that Jesus ever lived. Jesus, he ever died. And for your information, there is an empty tomb to prove that our Savior lives. Hallelujah. Read. John 20, 26, 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. God is not nervous. That you say you will not believe. Jesus Christ, his own disciple, one of them said he will never believe. But do you know what? He didn't say, I will never believe. He threw a challenge that he will not believe. Except, except, what is your challenge? And I speak to my Lord Jesus. If there be anybody in this auditorium or in TV world who doubts Jesus. I want you to know, don't only use the books. Go on your knees. Don't pray to Jesus. Challenge your creator that he ever, if he ever, if he ever sent one called Jesus into this world, he should let you see it. You'll be amazed how that he may physically appear to you and say, see my hands. The nails. Today as we are here preaching the gospel, there are iron curtain countries who will not allow preachers to enter in with the gospel of saving grace. But Jesus cannot be barred by iron curtains. He appears in Arabia. He appears in the Arabian Peninsula. He appears in countries that are landlocked. And as we sit here today, many in Arabia are turning to Christ. Many in Indonesia are turning to Christ. Many in Malaysia are turning to Christ. Not because somebody preached, but because somebody said, God, all the books are saying you didn't send your son Jesus. But now, if you created me, I want to know if Jesus really lived. Let me see it. This is the ultimate witness. Stop all the arguments. You are a spirit. You can talk. Whether you believe in cosmic conscience or cosmic consciousness. Whether you believe in nature as the originator of all things. Talk to that cosmic conscience and ask him. If Jesus died and resurrected, he should prove it. And that is the challenge Jesus loves. When you put him to the challenge, he would always appear. Remember, nobody preached to Paul. He was on his way. Not even asking a question to kill. And Jesus appeared to him brighter than the sun and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Jesus loves all humanity. If everything I presented to you today, 
doesn't convince you. You may be a priest. You may be a disciple or a student in any world religion. I'm not asking you to come into a religion. I'm asking you to go on your knees and seek the creator of the universe to bring you not into religion, but into life. Life abundant, which is in Jesus Christ. And Jesus himself will make himself known unto you without doubt. Say amen. I'm closing with various hypotheses in my presentation. And I want you to know that there is an escape hypothesis that says Jesus was not crucified. Like in Islam, he escaped. But I want them to also know that Jesus didn't escape. He died, resurrected, and showed himself by infallible proofs that he's alive. He ate with them. He drank with them. So the escapist hypothesis fails. The unburied hypothesis. Jesus was crucified, but he was not buried. For that reason, the Bible said they secured the tomb of Jesus. Why do you secure an empty tomb if he was not buried? So on that premise, the unburied hypothesis fails. To the third hypothesis, the buried hypothesis, which says Jesus was crucified and he was buried and remained buried. I say to you, there is an empty tomb that has been researched over the years till date to prove that my Savior leave it. Then, we come to the place where we deal with he did not remain buried hypothesis. You are getting close. So he died, you agree. So he was buried, you agree. But he did not remain buried, right? Oh, Pastor, but take your time. I don't mean to say he did not remain buried, but I mean to say the disciples stole him. Oh, that takes us to the stolen by disciples hypothesis. That the body of Jesus was removed by the disciples. People, these disciples were afraid of the soldiers. They ran away. The tomb was secured by these soldiers. That the man who is looking to, for you to arrest you, you now claim that you are going. How would you break through? How would you break through? How would you break through when these mighty soldiers were maintaining the seal and ensuring that the tomb was secure? It will only take the Spirit of God to blow the wind of sleep upon them. Ah, I said it, I said it, I said it. They slept, they slept. They slept, for your information. Date it with reference to geology. According to the timelines of Jesus, in the city of Jerusalem, there is in history a mighty earthquake that shook the foundations of Jerusalem, that moved the tombstone and threw it over the cliff. And the glorious light, who is Jesus, the mighty God, walked out of the tomb. History proves it. There is no doubt. History proves it. There is no doubt. So if you believe by the stolen, by the disciples' hypothesis, the disciples could not. They, were already, they had already run away. It took Jesus to resurrect and to meet Peter and to ask him, do you love me more than this? Nobody would venture the tomb. It was too serious. Until one woman called Magdalene, she, the soldiers didn't want him, want her. She, nobody cared because they knew she was a passionate lover. She came to the place and around this time, he saw a man who was a gardener that had early on resurrected. He said, where have they laid him? Who? Oh, so they have laid him. Probably the soldiers had unlocked, removed, taken him out to hide him. Where have they laid him? Jesus said, Mary, he knew him, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, that I may so share in the fellowship of his suffering. Mary, don't touch me. Hey, where am I going? To my father and Mary, your father. 
Where am I going? To my God and Mary, your God. Go and tell my brethren that I have ascended. Jesus didn't ascend once. He did it twice so that we will all know that he can do it again. Because if a man does it again and again, he can do it again. He can do it again. Ah, there are those who would say by natural cause of removal hypothesis, the body was removed by non-agents, which means earthquakes, which means some animal entered there. Wow. So God orchestrated that at the burial of Jesus, there should be an earthquake. Can you not see a divine hand at work in this? The matter is settled. Whether you like it or not, Jesus is greater than Krishna, greater than Buddha, greater than Apollonius. Bring a name, bring it up, bring it up. And let us check with Jesus. He's greater than all. It is in him all things consist. Back to your question. Let's see if there is a question. Ask it. Shalom, Pastor. Shalom. Thank you for the insightful teachings these past weeks on the death and resurrection of Jesus. I bless God. I ask this question because you're a master of apologetics. And beyond that. Please, what is the right apologetics to present to a colleague who cast doubts over the death and resurrection of Jesus? Do you have any doubts, Church of God? No. Carry on. By asserting that there are several world religions and cultures that have a son of God dying and rising up again to it save people. It is not true. There is no son of God dying and rising up again. To rise up is not to awake in spirit form. It is to awake in bodily resurrection. And to show yourself to your followers that you are alive. Nobody did it but Jesus. What makes the presentation of the death and resurrection of Christ unique from these stories, especially as they preceded the coming of Christ into the world? Relax. It is not all the stories that preceded. Apollonius didn't precede. Krishna preceded. But look at this. When you look behind, he conquered Krishna. When you look ahead, he conquered Apollonius. He is Lord of Lords. He is King of Kings forever and ever. Forever and ever. So you see, he asked for those who preceded. We dealt with them. He didn't ask for those who were afore. We dealt with them. So where? Jesus got no size. He's got no size. He's got no size. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Further questions? Yes, the next question that linked with it is from David Amo. Mm -hmm. He said, in response to an argument appealing to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, All right. sometimes will be objected that the resurrection is not unique. It's not but unique. Fits a How is the resurrection not unique and who resurrected? Carry on. Give us a name. But fits a pattern of similar claims made on behalf of other religious figures. Uh -huh. The most frequent example. The most frequent example. Is Apollonius of Tiana. People. How did Apollonius fit the exactness of the resurrection? He disappeared in a shrine. Jesus, he came out of a tomb. It was not a shrine. And he seated in heaven's sanctum to the glory of God. Do you have any questions? So he concludes, apparently such an objection doesn't disprove the resurrection. But challenges the uniqueness it of It doesn't things. challenge. It cannot even begin it. Resurrection has no challenge. No challenger. You may have stories that look like a woman gave birth to one son. You may have stories that look like somebody died. But nobody died for the forgiveness of sins in the whole of the universe and nobody resurrected to impart new life in the whole world it is only christianity that says man must be born again to see the kingdom of god and that born again comes as a result 
of being resurrected with Christ because we were planted in the likeness of his death and we were raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Jesus said unto them, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. CCI, lift up your right hand towards heaven. Say with me, I believe, I believe. in the proof of resurrection. In the proof of resurrection. Say with loudness, I believe. I believe. In the proof of resurrection. In the proof of resurrection. I am. I am. The proof. The proof. Of the resurrected Christ. Of the resurrected Christ. The facts. The facts. Are there. Are there. But I am the proof. But I am the proof. And this is it. And this is it. I have a new life in I Christ. I have a new life in Christ. And that is. And that is. The ultimate proof. The ultimate proof. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. In one minute, I want to ask you a question. What is the greatest proof in all that we have studied today that Jesus died and resurrected and there is no one to compare? Two words. What is the greatest proof that it, the tomb was empty? Too much words. Empty tomb. Too much words. The greatest proof that Jesus died and he resurrected and there is none that can compare. Pass the mic. Next. Let him go this way. What is the greatest proof that Jesus died and resurrected and none can compare? Newness of life. Newness of life. Where is it? In my spirit. So where is the greatest proof? Me. Even is I. It is I. It is I. Ego e imi. It is I. It is I. The proof of the death and resurrection is for you to know who you are. It is I. I am the ultimate proof that Jesus died and resurrected. I've given you too much, but the ultimate is me. I have new life in me. It is I. It is I. It is I. Everybody say it is I. It is I. Say it in Greek. Ego e imi. Ego e imi. Ego e imi. Ego e imi. It is I. It is I. I said it is I. It is I. Say it again. It is I. It is I. Who is the proof of resurrection? It is I. Who is the proof that Jesus died? It is I. Who is the proof that Jesus is alive? It is I. Who is the proof that Jesus is seated on the right hand of God? It is I. Who is the proof that Jesus is in the miracle business? It is I. Who is the proof that the dead still rise It is I. Come on, shout, it is I. It is I. Give God the glory and the praise. Father, I thank you for the ministry of your word. I believe that the proof of the death and the resurrection of our Christ, even Jesus, the Son of God, has come to us to strengthen our faith and to cause us to know him better. I ask that you will touch our lives and our hearts as we grow deeper in this revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be in this meeting right now. It doesn't matter who you are. You may be an elder. You may even be a pastor. You may be a member. Probably you have had questions and doubts about the death of Jesus. But today you have heard it and it has dissolved all your doubts. Apart from that, you 
have heard the word that came to you today probably in TV well and you want to say I want to be the proof of the resurrected Christ that brings me into new life don't waste time just slip your hand up if you want this wherever you are just lift up your hand if you want this I want to be the proof that Jesus died and was resurrected ushers quickly you know what I want you to do for me I want you to stand up on your feet wherever you are stand up on your feet in TV world just be on your feet it doesn't matter you can even be the archbishop of this church and there is subtle doubts and fears sometimes but today your doubts have been dissolved if you are up on your feet come to me come come to me I want to pray for you come come to me come from wherever celebrate them as they come knowing you Jesus. Come, come, come from everywhere. You cannot walk out of this meeting until you are the proof that Jesus, He died and was raised. I believe. Come on, come from everywhere. Celebrate them, CCI. Give God praise. A conviction that Jesus died and resurrected. I need no other. Yes. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. Let them come this way. Yes. It is enough. It is enough that Jesus died. Jesus died. is Lord I declare he is Lord over my life from today I receive and live in newness of life Holy Spirit you are my witness that Jesus is alive from today life of God bask within me Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank you for as many people that have come into the affirmation of faith. 
that without doubt or argument it is settled with him as that you sent your holy child Jesus he died on the third day he rose I pray for these ones that they will be confirmed in the faith to live the life of God strengthen their work in you even today and forevermore in Jesus name Amen celebrate yourself I want you to be on your feet congratulations give yourself a round of applause thank you father I want you to know that I'm happy to be your pastor I'm happy to pray for you so leave your name because I want to make mention of your name when I pray Bye-bye. Pastor Obed, always a blessing.